Okay, this question is from the 2006 competition, and only 1% of students got this one right. Although this one isn't multiple choice, so that does make it harder. Alright, um, if you haven't tried this one before, then pause the video here and have a go. Alright, so simultaneous equations. Two main methods to deal with these. One is substitution, and the other one is elimination. Now, I did actually try this one out with substitution, but it quickly got very messy. You don't want to use substitution for this one. Instead, we're just going to sort of take each equation. I'm going to call this equation 1, equation 2, and 3. And we'll just see what we can get out of this. So the first thing that I thought of was, what if we squared both sides of equation 1? Because then we're going to get some a squareds and b squareds, and maybe that's going to be able to be combined with equation 2 somehow. So let's work out equation 1 squared. So this may not exactly be the same as elimination method that you're familiar with, but it's, it's basically the same sort of thing. Um, okay, so square both sides of this. On the left, if you think of it, like if, if you're having trouble expanding it, then maybe write it out like this first. So we've got a squared from there, and then you have an ab then there'll also be an AB from those, and you know there's going to be BC and BC again and so on. So you're going to get A squared plus B squared plus C squared, and then there's two of each of the cross terms, I guess. Okay, well that's really good because then we can subtract equation 2 from that, and that's going to get rid of that. So I might just um, cross that out and change that to 6 on the right. So if we just subtract that from both sides. And then let's divide both sides by 2. So that gives us AB plus BC plus AC is 3. So that might be useful. Now another thing we could do is we could multiply equation 1 by equation 2 because that's going to give us like an a cubed and b cubed and so on. So we might be able to combine that with equation 3 somehow. So equation 1 times equation 2. On the left, we've got a plus b plus c times a squared plus b squared plus c squared. That looked like a 4. And that equals that times that. So when we expand this, we're going to get like the a cubed from there, and the, and the b cubed and so on. And then we're also going to get a b squared plus a a c squared from there. And we're going to get a b a squared, oops, b a squared, um, plus b c squared and a c a squared and c b squared. So, that's a bit annoying, but um, at least now we can subtract equation 3 from that. So, if I just subtract equation 3, get rid of that, and subtract 22 from that, so we get that that is 18. So that might be useful later on. Um, now, what else we could do is with this equation, we might be able to do something with that. I might call that equation 4. And then we could try something like equation 1 times equation 4 and see what happens. This, with this one, I just sort of tried a lot of things, and not everything was helpful but most of it was. One of the things I tried that wasn't helpful, I think, was I tried multiplying equation 1 by equation 3. There might be a way to do it with that, but I didn't, it didn't lead to anything for me. Uh, let's just try out everything we can think of. So equation 1 times equation 4. So on the left, we've got the a plus b plus c times that. And then on the right, we've got the 4 times 3, so 12. So that is going to make a squared b plus, we'll have an abc plus a squared c 
plus AB squared plus B squared C plus another ABC um, plus another ABC from there plus BC squared and AC squared from there. <laughs> I'm running out of space again. Okay, so we've got um, 3ABC from those and then plus the rest of this stuff which is actually the same as what we had here, right? Because we've got the a squared b, which was there, and a squared c, which was there, and so on. And we know that all of that is 18. So we've got 3abc plus 18 equals 12. So that's good, because we can work out abc. Uh, if we shift that over, we get negative 6, and then divide by, by 3, and we get negative 2. So that might come in handy. Another thing that we could do is we could square equation 4. Let's see what we can come up with with that. So equation 4 squared. So that squared, you're going to get like the square of each one and then plus the cross terms, but there's going to be two of each. Like, because it's pretty much the same as squaring equation 1, if you remember that had the squares and then two times the cross terms. So, oops, where's the question for gone? So, um, by the cross terms, I mean like AB times BC and so on. So, AB squared C, and we're going to get A squared BC and ABC squared. Okay, and then on the right, we've got 9. Okay. Now, with this bit, you might notice that we can factorize that because we've got ABC in each term. So that's um, ABC times A plus B plus C. Well, we know A plus B plus C, that was 4. And we know ABC is negative 2. So we've got 4 times negative 2. That bit's negative 8. And then times that 2 is negative 16. So like that whole thing is negative 16. If we shift that over, we'll get 25. So we know that all of that is 25. Okay, and then another thing that we could do, because we're looking for a to the fourth, so I sort of thought of two ways that we might be able to get a to the fourth. We could do equation one times equation three. Um, that didn't work out too well. Or maybe it does, I just couldn't see a way to make it work out. The other way that you could do it is you can square equation two, because that's going to give you an a to the fourth and so on. So let's try that. So that will give you a to the fourth plus b to the fourth plus c to the fourth. And again, two times the cross terms. So a squared, c squared, b squared, c squared, and a squared, b squared. And that was 10, so 10 squared is 100. OK, well now we've got that that is 25. So that whole thing is 50. We can shift that across, and we get that that is 50, because 100 minus 50. So that is the answer to that one. OK, so I went back and had another go at substitution method and worked it out this time. So I don't want to spend too long on this, but let me just quickly go through what I did. So I took that equation and solved it for C, and then subbed it into equation 2, and played around with that and got to there. Um, and then subbed it into equation 3 as well, and that was annoying to expand that cubed, but yeah, you can do that. Some stuff cancels. And then what I did was, instead of solving this for b, which would be kind of like the standard way to do substitution, um, you can do that, and, and then you get like, it's a quadratic in b, and so it's like plus or minus square roots of stuff, and that's where I gave up before because it was a bit too messy. But instead of doing that, what I did this time was I decided to solve this for b squared um, and then sub that in there and also in there and see what happens. And it turns out that a lot of stuff cancels and you just end up with uh, this cubic. Now, if you just try a few values, like 
often you'll get solutions for, you know, if you try a equals 1 and a equals negative 1 and 2 and negative 2 and so on, you might find some solutions. So I tried a equals 2 and that um, worked, that gave 0. So what you can do then is divide that by a minus 2 because you know that that's a factor of it. So if you divide that by a minus 2, you get a squared minus 2a minus 1. So either you've got a equals 2 or this equals 0. So solve that just using quadratic formula. You would get a equals 1 plus or minus root 2. So because of the symmetry of the situation where you've got like a and b and c are essentially interchangeable, like if you swap a and b, the, the system of equations is still like the same thing. Uh, that means that these solutions for a are also solutions for b and c. So it might be like a equals b, sorry, a equals 2, b equals 1 plus root 2, and c equals 1 minus root 2. So then to work out a to the 4th plus b to the 4th plus c to the 4th, you just raise all those things to the power 4. So I did that. If you expand those, um, then a lot of stuff cancels, like you've got the plus 4 root 2 there and the minus 4 root 2 there. The stuff that's left after you've cancelled, you've got 1 and 12 and 4, that makes 17, and then you've also got 17 there, and the 2 to the 4th is 16. So you add all those up and you get 50. So that's another way that you can do it. The, um, the solutions from the booklet actually did it sort of a way that was in between those two because what they did was um, they started out the same as what I was doing before with like elimination basically. Uh, but once they worked out ABC and AB plus BC plus AC, they used that to find the, um, the coefficients of the cubic. So they went like straight from that to, to this point and then did the same thing from there. So there's like three different methods so far that I know of that you can use to solve this. Okay, let me know if you have any questions and stay tuned for the next video. You might also like to check out the inheritance question that I did for the junior students because that was a senior question as well and only 8% of the seniors got that one right.